Samsung Galaxy A13 Review, What the Low-Budget Smartphone Can Do Samsung can only manufacture flagships like its Samsung Galaxy S22 at an MSRP starting at €849? Euros? Not at all. That the South Korean tech company also puts inexpensive devices on the market has been proven for years with Samsung's A-Series. Unfortunately, last year's model in the form of the Galaxy A12 could not really convince. This is now supposed to work differently. We want to take a closer look at whether Samsung can bring another price performance hit to the start with the latest generation Galaxy A13 in our review. What can the smartphone do for just under 190 euros? We put it under the microscope in the Samsung Galaxy A13 test. Samsung obviously didn't wear any spending pants when it came to filling the packaging. In good old Apple fashion, there is only a matching charging cable, USB-C to USB-C, besides the smartphone itself, usual paperwork and the SIM card tool. The missing power adapter is now apparently a trademark of all devices from Samsung's A and M series. Design and workmanship. Even if the price of the Samsung Galaxy A13 is very small, the smartphone's display is not at all. This measures a proud 6.6 inches diagonally, which puts the low-budget device in line with Samsung's Galaxy M23 5G and M33 5G. Thus, the A13 grows by 0.1 inches compared to the A12 from 2021. A small teardrop notch trickles into the display at the upper screen edge. The selfie camera is hidden in here. The screen's left and right edges look pleasingly thin. Only the edges on the bottom and top of the smartphone no longer look contemporary. Especially in direct comparison with the in-house flagship Galaxy S22, this becomes more than obvious. However, you always have to keep in mind that the Galaxy A13 costs just €189.00 Euros and thus a fraction of the upper-class smartphone. The case design, on the other hand, is reminiscent of Samsung's two low-priced Galaxy M23 5G and M33 5G smartphones. Thus, the dual SIM slot is on the left, the on-off button with integrated fingerprint sensor and the volume rocker are on the right. On the top, there is also a microphone next to the speaker. On the bottom, Samsung places another speaker, a 3.5mm jack, a microphone and the USB-C port. Turning the smartphone over reveals the nicely designed back. Samsung still relies on a quad camera, which the manufacturer arranges unorthodoxly. Unlike the Galaxy M33 5G, which also has four lenses, Samsung does not place the module squarely. Instead, there are three cameras below each other and the fourth one is a smaller one next to it. Samsung relies entirely on plastic for its case. This may sound cheap, but it does not feel that way. However, the Galaxy A13 is anything but compact in the hand in view of its size of 165.1 by 76.4 x 8.8 mm and a weight of 195 grams. In combination with the rounded shapes, it threatened to slip out of the hand once or twice in the test. However, that is a matter of taste. Unfortunately, the glossy design makes the A13 extremely susceptible to fingerprints. Display. A direct comparison to the predecessor is possible with the Galaxy A13's display. The successor clearly scores in terms of resolution in particular. The Galaxy A12 only had a resolution of HD+. In contrast, the new Galaxy A13 offers an FHD Plus resolution of 1080 x 2408 pixels, which makes for a much sharper overall picture. A look at the display makes it clear that the plan works. There is hardly anything to complain about in terms of screen sharpness. The panel is a different story. As in the two slightly more expensive Samsung devices Galaxy M23 5G and M33 5G, Samsung also relies on an LCD display here. In the end result, the Galaxy A13 cannot really deliver a contemporary image reproduction. Especially compared to other devices with OLED panels, the Galaxy A13 simply cannot keep up. This starts with the contrasts and continues with the vivid colors. In terms of refresh rates, the A13 also falls short of the M23 and M33. Instead of 120 Hz, it only offers 60 Hz. All in all, the display offers a satisfactory performance, but nothing more. Nevertheless, you have to keep the low price in mind here as well. 
Samsung Galaxy A13 Performance Of course, a look at the performance of the smartphone, which costs 189.00 euros, is exciting. Samsung installs an octa-core processor with a clock rate of 2.0 GHz here. This is presumably an Exynos 850. It is supposed to make the Galaxy A13 a real battery miracle since it is supposed to work very energy efficiently. Since the processor is everything else powerful, you should not expect too big jumps in the device's daily use. For standard applications like online shopping and browsing, this is definitely enough. Of course, popular apps like YouTube can also be used without problems. However, stutters occur from time to time, which will definitely bother some users over time. However, the Galaxy A13 quickly runs out of steam when it comes to playing demanding mobile games. The M23 5G and especially the M33 5G are clearly ahead. Next up is the Nero PHEV which pairs the same 1.6-liter gasoline motor to a bigger 62 kW electric motor and 11.1 kWh Li-ion battery pack. The total output gets bumped up to 180 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque, which Kia claims to offer 33 miles of EV-only driving range when equipped with 16-inch wheels. The PHEV can be recharged from nil to full using level 2 charging in under 3 hours. The EV packs a 64.8 kWh battery pack and a 201 horsepower electric motor. It offers DC fast charging that can juice things up from 10 to 80% in less than 45 minutes. The coupled 11 kW charger provides a full charge in less than 7 hours on a level 2 charger. And the 2023 Nero EV can do 253 miles on a single charge. Radical interior is high on innovation and sustenance. The interior also gets a complete overhaul and is now designed in the image of the Kia EV6 with a sleek and futuristic approach. The dashboard has a sloping design with things narrowing down as we move away from the cockpit. The two-spoke steering wheel is radical yet comfortable to use. But the most important aspect is that Kia has gone the sustainable and recycled route with the materials used. Kia states that there are no animal products in the cabin. The headliner is made using recycled paper and the upholstery is made using biopolyurethane and material extracted from eucalyptus leaves. The single slab instrument cluster and infotainment system is an optional extra that fuses two 10.25 inch screens. And the increase in dimensions also translates to improved seating and cargo space. The 2023 Kia Nero is all about the technology. Technology takes the front row in the 2023 Kia Nero. The EV comes with vehicle to load capabilities that can use the car's battery to run a range of appliances, including a coffee maker. Comfort and convenience get a boost with loads of tech features including optional front seat heating and ventilation and available memory settings. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard and a head-up display is optional. The 2023 Nero can also be had with an optional 8-speaker Harman Kardon audio system. Safety features are held in high esteem with loads coming in as standard. These include forward collision avoidance with pedestrian detection, lane follow assist, driver attention warning, and lane keep assist to name a few. Optional features include smart cruise control with stop and go, navigation-based curve speed reduction, as well as highway driving assist 2, a semi-autonomous driving feature. Kia also packs in a new, green zone, drive mode for hybrid and PHEV models that automatically shifts to EV-only propulsion by detecting residential areas, school zones, and hospitals using the navigation system. Pricing hasn't been announced yet but the 2023 Kia Nero is slated to be at the dealership by fall 2022. We expect it to be a value proposition and will sit lower than the Kia EV6 which is expected to start from the $40,000 mark.